Hello again, my name's Julia Johnson and today I'm going to talk to you about one of my favourite paintings in the Williamson's collections, Valkyrie by Frederick Sandys, painted in 1868. Now this is a painting that I saw for the first time on Merseyside but not at the Williamson, rather on the other side of the Mersey at the Walker Art Gallery in a pre-Raphaelite exhibition they held about four years ago. So when I came to the Williamson, I was really pleased to find out that this was part of the collections. Anthony Frederick Augustus Sandys was born in Norwich in 1832 and was a skilled draftsman, illustrator and painter. He was loosely associated with the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, never a central member of the group, but he did actually live with Dante Gabriel Rossetti in Chelsea between 1866 and 1867, and there are clear influences of their style in this painting. Let's think about what some of those influences are. First of all, we have quite large expanses of single colours. Second of all, we have a fine attention to detail, particularly noticeable in the folds of the Valkyrie's dress and in the needles of the pine branch the raven is sitting on. Um, John Ruskin, who might be called the lead philosopher of the Pre-Raphaelite group, said that artists should look to nature and pay attention to everything, and so this attention to detail was central to that. Thirdly, we have a distinctive female protagonist. Women are often the stars of Pre-Raphaelite paintings, but you might not get much stronger than a Valkyrie. In Norse mythology, the power of the Valkyrie is entirely tied to the fates of men in battle. Their first job is to decide which of those would live and which will die. And of those who die, they then select half to take to Valhalla to sit beside Odin and who will be his warriors when the time of Ragnarok comes. While it would be correct to say that Valkyries are associated with death, there is more nuance to their role than simply being harbingers of doom. We can guess at some of this from some of the symbols we see in this painting. Obviously, the Valkyrie has one foot upon a skull, a clear symbol of death. But next to her, on the right-hand side of the painting, we see a group of very distinctive, very bright blue irises. And in painting, blue irises in particular are a symbol of hope. So we can see that while death might be coming, there is hope that you might be one of the chosen ones who will get to Valhalla. Now here we also see our Valkyrie in conversation with a raven. Ravens in Norse mythology were closely associated with the king of the gods, Odin. He had two ravens called Hugin and Munin. I hope I'm pronouncing those correctly. They translate as thought and memory. Each day they would fly across the world observing everything that was going on, and report this back to Odin. So it may well be here that they are delivering this Valkyrie a message of a battle. Perhaps she has some decisions to make. This Valkyrie, then, is a strong and powerful woman, and one with a dark side. And I find it interesting that Sandys chose such women as the protagonist of more than one of his portraits. If you have been to the Walker Art Gallery in Liverpool, you might well have spotted his Helen of Troy. It's a small but extremely distinctive face, the face that launched a thousand ships and of course caused a battle that has lived on in legend ever since and caused the death of many warriors. He also painted Medea, the mythological wife of Jason, leader of the Argonauts, who, when Jason abandoned her for another woman, took her revenge by murdering her own children. In one way, I find it so fascinating that Sandys has chosen to portray these three women who are very much in control of their own destinies and those of men. In a way, it makes a refreshing change to some of the other iconic women of pre-Raphaelite art, such as John Everett Millay's Ophelia or John William Waterhouse's Lady of Shalott, both of whom we see as the tragic victims of being unable to control their own emotions. But don't worry, I'm not fooled into thinking there's some kind of empowering message in this. Though some of these figures, such as Medea and the Valkyries, have been co-opted to tell such stories for the 21st century. I often find in pre-Raphaelite art that there is a tension between 
beauty and seductiveness and a kind of warning moralistic danger to these qualities. And it's notable in this context that each of these three women that I've discussed as being subjects that Sandy has chosen to paint poses a danger, physical or otherwise, to men. They transgress the male gaze with their inability to be docile. For all their beauty and allure, these are not model women. They're more in the mode of dangerous temptresses. Indeed, Norse mythology tells tales of Valkyries who took human warriors as lovers. But these men did not get a free pass of any kind or any favouritism when it came to their fate in battle. The Valkyrie's responsibility is to her role beyond her emotions. And this, to men, could be a dangerous thing. This painting has a long history with the Williamson Art Gallery, having been purchased from the Bosire collection in 1934. We hope that when we are able to open again, you will come and see this painting for yourselves. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.